justice, temperance, wisdom, courage. Applying ancient philosophy to modern times, this is the Sunday Stoic. On this episode, we will explore a core Stoic theme, trying to match our expectations to reality. So often we have our eyes set on a goal that we forget all of the obstacles we're likely to encounter on the way. The Stoics remind us that to remain tranquil, happy, and above all virtuous, we must anticipate the struggles ahead. The Thoughts of Marcus Aurelius, Book 7, Reading Number 61 The art of life is more like the wrestler's art than the dancer's in respect of this, that it should stand ready and firm to meet onsets which are sudden and unexpected. The Enchiridion by Epictetus Number 4 When you are going about any action, remind yourself what nature the action is. If you are going to bathe, picture yourself the things which usually happen in the bath. Some people splash the water, some push, some use abusive language, and others steal. Thus, you will more safely go about this action if you say to yourself, I will now go bathe and keep my own mind in a state conformable to nature, and in the same manner with regard to every other action. For this, if any hindrance arises in bathing, you will have it ready to say, It was not only to bathe that I desired, but to keep my mind in a state conformable to nature." and I will not keep it if I am bothered at things that happen. Moral Letters to Lucilius, Letter 96, On Facing Hardships Spite of all you do, you still chafe and complain, not understanding that in all the evils to which you refer, there is really only one, the fact that you do chafe and complain. If you ask me, I think that for a man there is no misery unless there be something in the universe which he thinks miserable. I shall not endure myself on that day when I find anything unendurable. I am ill, but that is part of my lot. My slaves have fallen sick. My income has gone off. My house is rickety. I have been assailed by losses, accidents, toil, and fear. This is a common thing. Nay, that was an understatement. It was an inevitable thing. Such affairs come by order and not by accident. If you will believe me, it is my inmost emotions that I am just now disclosing to you. When everything seems to go hard and uphill, I have trained myself not merely to obey God, but to agree with His decisions. I follow Him because my soul wills it, and not because I must. Nothing will ever happen to me that I shall receive with ill humor or with a wry face. I shall pay up all my taxes willingly. Now, all things which cause us to groan or recoil are part of the tax of life. Things, my dear Lucilius, which you should never hope and never seek to escape. It was this disease of the bladder that made you apprehensive. Downcast letters came from you. You were continually getting worse. I will touch the truth more closely and say that you feared for your life. But come, did you not know that when you prayed for a long life, that this is what you were praying for? A long life includes all these troubles, just as a long journey includes dust and mud and rain. But, you cry, I wish to live and at the same time to be immune from all ills. Such womanish cry does no credit to a man. Consider in what attitude you should receive this prayer of mine. I offer it not only in a good but a noble spirit. Quote, May gods and goddesses alike forbid that fortune keep you in luxury. Ask yourself voluntarily which you would choose if some god gave you the choice, a life in a cafe or a life in a camp. And yet life, Lucilius, is really a battle. For this reason, those who are tossed about at sea, who proceed uphill and downhill over toilsome crags and heights, 
who go on campaigns that bring the greatest danger, are heroes and front-rank fighters. But persons who live in rotten luxury and ease while others toil are mere turtle doves, safe only because men despise them. Farewell. Like the show? Help support the Sunday Stoic by rating us on iTunes. Volunteer to read, suggest content, or send comments to sundaystoic at gmail.com. Thanks, and carpe diem. One of the things my dad often says is, why does everything have to be such a fight? Well, the readings in today's podcast will answer that question. One of my dad's sayings is, why does everything have to be such a fight? And, oddly enough, we find the answers to that question in today's readings. In his often quoted statement, Marcus Aurelius reminds us that life is a wrestling match more than a dance. You often hear people say, life's a dance. You learn as you go. There's even a country song by that name, right? But he says that's not really the case. It's not quite as elegant. It's more of a fight. You're down on the ground, you're back up again, you're knocked on your face, you're, you're trying to get back up. It's, it's complicated. It's difficult. If you think of it like a dance and then someone knocks you over, you're going to get mad. But if you already know you're in a wrestling match, then you expect it. So we always have to be ready for the next move to stay one step ahead of our opponent. Then Epictetus reminds us that while we make plans to do things, we have to keep in mind that things will happen outside of our power to control, and we don't want to react negatively to the things outside of our control. For example, let's say we go to the movies, and you get in traffic, and you get to the movie theater, and there's a line. There's a great big line, and then you get up to the ticket counter, and it's sold out. Or maybe you happen to get a ticket, and then the projector burns out while you're waiting for the previews to start. Something happens that cancels your plans. You could very easily get mad. You could let that ruin your evening. You could rant about it for hours. But Epictetus reminds us that our overarching goal above all else is to live according to nature. The Stoics studied logic, ethics, and what they called physics, like the natural sciences, metaphysics, things like that. And we know from the study of those fields like logic and science, how the world works. That's very important for the Stoics, to understand how the world works. If you know how, this, how the world works, you will not expect impossible things. And for things to always go smoothly is an impossible wish. Things break. People are rude. Stuff happens. You need to expect that these things will happen. So then, when your plans are disrupted, really nothing unnatural has occurred. But if you get angry, you're getting mad at nature. You're getting mad at the inevitable. And that is illogical. That is unstoic. Lastly, here, Seneca, in his reading, reminds us that it is foolish, once again, to wish for things that are impossible. He says to Lucilius, How could you possibly wish for a long life that was also free from trouble? The things that happen to us... The getting sick, having your house, uh, you know, rot out from under you and fall down, uh, having, having, um, your money lost. All of these things are the taxes you pay for a long life. The only way to not have these things happen is to die. And if you want to live a long time, you're going to have to face trouble. It's foolish to wish for a long life and think it will not be full of trouble. He reminds me of Theodore Roosevelt. Also in this writing, there's a quote that I will paraphrase from uh, Theodore Roosevelt where he says, It's not the critic who stands outside the ring that deserves the praise, but the fighter who, even though he failed, gets back up again and again. Um, he says that it's not the person living in luxury who li lives the easiest life possible that tries to avoid these battles. That is the one that we should look up to. It's those who go out and 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 fight with life every single day and do it again and again that deserve our praise. He even has a prayer for this. May the gods and goddesses alike forbid that fortune keep you in luxury. 
He's praying to the gods that they prevent fortune, which I believe was another goddess who kind of like Lady Luck, right? Uh, keep Lady Luck from making you wealthy because you'll become a less interesting, less noble person if you end up becoming soft and rich. We as humans are good at expecting the best to happen, and when problems arise, it's easily to get frustrated and angry. We don't think about the problems that may arise. That's not to say that that's all we want to do is focus on everything that can go wrong, but expect it. Oh, my tire went flat. Yep, tires do that. But if we expect nature to do her work, we know that things will fall apart. Plans will change. Equipment will fail. Our job as Stoics is to persevere, adapt, and overcome, not to lose our minds and yell and scream and get mad and disrupt our inner cool. I'm not always great at following this advice, my own advice here, but I started woodworking uh, a while ago. I'm not great at it. I'm kind of self-taught, and I like to build guitars out of cigar boxes. I'll put a picture of one on the Facebook uh, page so you can see what that looks like. I started woodworking, building cigar box guitars, and and not being great at woodworking, I mess up a lot. <laughs> so I'll mess something up. I'll cut a neck too short, or the bridge of my guitar will be too low to work with the, the guitar I had just built, and I thought it would look great on there, and now it won't work. And And to me, it almost felt like the guitar or the universe or whatever was trying to make me mad, to push my buttons, like like it was intentionally not working, right? And And that is illogical and against our knowledge of nature. We are trying to live according to nature. So now, instead of getting mad, at least more often than I used to, I go, huh, that didn't work. Okay, I have a new challenge to overcome, a chance to dig into my creativity, to find a new solution to this weird problem that I have never experienced before. And I go in and I try to adapt and overcome. This is where the power of the uh, practice of the premeditatio malorum comes in. If we spend a little bit of time reminding ourselves that we're going to end up with some bumps in this road, things may happen, then the unexpected won't upset us. Uh, or how should I say that? Let me rephrase. This is where the practice of premeditatio malorum comes in. If we can systematically think about the bumps in the road that may occur, then we will not get so upset. The unexpected won't upset us as much as a surprise will. So, work for the best, expect there to be bumps in the road, and carpe diem.